The now infamous Dominic Cummings Newsnight introduction got way more attention than in truth it ever deserved. It was neither the best nor the worst opening we've ever done. I say we because the scripts were as always written, modified, rewritten, edited, signed off by a team. The original story, you'll remember, had been broken by Pippa Creera, her excellent colleagues at The Mirror, who then went on to report many more stories of rule breaking over the subsequent 12 months. We merely picked up the story the day after the Cummings Rose Garden press conference. And our intro stated bluntly and boldly that he'd broken the rules. And it asked why the government, Boris Johnson, was standing by him. The introduction set out, as is often the case, the rest of the show. We had Conservative MPs explaining the PM's loyalty. We had pollsters explaining the public horror on that issue. We had defenders, we had critics, and we had a detailed analysis of which rules had been broken and when. In other words, the introduction was a precy of what viewers could expect of the whole show. And on the night itself, the programme passed off with a few pleasant texts from BBC editors and, frankly, little else. It was only the next morning that the wheels fell off. A phone call of complaint was made from Downing Street to the BBC News management. This, for context, is not unusual. It wasn't unusual in the Blair days, far from it, in the Brown days, in the Cameron days. What I'm saying is, it is pretty normal for government spin doctors to vocalise their displeasure with journalists. What was not foreseen was the speed with which the BBC sought to pacify the complainant. Within hours, a very public apology was made. The programme was accused of a failure of impartiality. The recording disappeared from the iPlayer and there were paparazzi outside my front door. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not standing here trying to pretend our intro was the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> when I hear it now, honestly, I think it was a bit long-winded, wordy, sounded a bit peaked. But I don't think, wow, what a shocking breach of impartiality because we called out the actions of one of the chief architects of the COVID laws. We show our impartiality when we report without fear or favour, when we're not scared to hold power to account, even when it feels uncomfortable to do so, when we understand that if we've covered rule breaking by a Scottish chief medical officer or an English government scientist, then journalistic rigour should be applied to those who make policy within number 10. The one person, ironically, who understood this was Dominic Cummings himself who texted me that very evening to offer his wry support. So back to the speed of response. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> Why had the BBC immediately and publicly sought to confirm the government spokesman's opinion without any kind of due process? It makes no sense for an organisation that is admirably, famously rigorous about procedure unless it was perhaps sending a message of reassurance directly to the government itself. Put this in the context of the BBC board, where another active agent of the Conservative Party, a former Downing Street spin doctor and former advisor to BBC rival GB News now sits, acting as the arbiter of BBC impartiality. According to the Financial Times, he's attempted to block the appointment of journalists he considers damaging to government relations, provoking Labour's deputy leader, among others, to call it Tory cronyism at the heart of the BBC. 